again and welcome back to Booster Therapy, your cure for that pack crack and addiction. We're here again today with another unique unboxing. What a strange box. That's right, guys. It's another Commander Deck Tech, and this one comes from pop popular demand. That's right. It's time to break down our version of Kumena, the Tyrant of Orazka. So, Kumena, 3 mana, so he's a cheap commander, 2-4. Tap, another untap Merfolk you control. Kumena can't be blocked, so hey, that's nice. Commander damage getting through unblocked. Tap, 3 untap Merfolk you control. Draw a card. Tap, 5, and put a 1-1 one, one counter on each Merfolk you control. So, this will be a fun little tribal breakdown. We'll talk about some staples for any kind of tribal deck, as well as how we're going to abuse this tapping mechanic that Kumena kind of opens the door for. So we're going to keep him right off to the side, and we're going to kind of piece through this like we always do, going through the various stages of it. And the first one we're going to start with is the funnest stage. It's, of course, a tribal deck, and that means we've got a lot of creatures that are on that tribal method. That's right. Lots and lots and lots of merfolk to break down and lots of way to, ways to play off that. So, let's start with those creature spells, and most importantly, let's start off with the lords. There are a lot of merfolk lords, so it's a huge part of what makes this deck fun, is we have so many options to make our little tiny merfolks gigantic creatures that are impossible to deal with. And then for us, it's just, how do we control the board state so we don't constantly get these things wiped and wiped and wiped to where... We don't have, you know, anybody in play, because that would be a tragedy. So, Merfolk Sovereign, it's a lord, and he also makes Merfolk unblockable, so that's great. Got Master of the Pearl Triton, another Merfolk lord that gives Island Walk as well. We've got the Merkfiend Liege. Well, this one itself is not a Merfolk. We have so many green and blue creatures. And check out that final ability. Untap all green and or blue creatures... You control during each other player's on tap step. That's right, he's giving us insane access to that broken ability of tapping to draw cards, to beef things up, you know, everything we want to do. Uh, we've got the Coral Helm Commander, a little bit slower, but ultimately a, a, a lord that will be able to fly once we level him up. That's right, level up. We've got the Merfolk Regery. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, and he has one where you get to tap or untap target permanent whenever you cast a merfolk. So again, this could be untapping your own stuff to just do more in a turn or leave mana open so you can actually counter a spell or control the board. Or it lets you tap other things down to, to clear the way for you to just kind of smash on in. And then we've got the original, Lord of Atlantis. Again, 1-1, one, one, it's a lord. Uh, or gives plus 1, plus 1, he's a 2-2 two, two in, in Island Walk. And remember, this has been corrected where these lords so there's a few of them you know like the goblin king and things like that this in itself is also a merfolk it was just old they didn't have it then and then one of the newest lords the merfolk mistbinder two mana two two just standard lord let's dive into some of these uh these merfolk so first one we got is the cold eye selkie a lot of you guys should have your hands on this too it's been reprinted in so many different ways i think this one itself pretty sure this symbol is in one of the merfolk tribal decks but it was, it was printed in a lot of different ways, even in some of the commander decks, so just a good card. Once it gets through, you get to draw a card. Um, whenever this guy becomes tapped, so whether that's you attacking with him or using that broken ability of Tyrant of Araska of Kumena, every time he becomes tapped, you're drawing cards, and we all know drawing cards is good. The Deep Root Champion, um, so when we're trying to control the board state and casting all these non-creature spells, he just gets bigger. Got the Master of Waves. This guy spits out a ton of little uh, elementals based on your devotion, which is kind of nice. And then it's a lord for those elementals. What's really cool here is it's protection from red. It's just a unique thing to have on a merfolk, and it is something that does come into handy every now and again. Um, Tatiova, the Benthic Druid. So one that just lets us draw more cards off our land play, so that way when we're getting and, and drawing land, it's not necessarily a dead card if we've got something like this on the board. The true name Nemesis, this is so you can pick your favorite person and make an enemy right away because this guy won't be touched by that person. So whoever seems at the time like the biggest threat, you're going to have protection from him, or at least the true name will. 
Jade Light Ranger, the explore ability is just really nice, and you can also be a pretty big merfolk for three mana. Vorel of the Hullclad. So we know we're going to be getting tons of 1-1 one -one counters from Kumena's ability, especially if we get a chance to really abuse that. This will just double that up and double that up. It's not just adding one, it's doubling it. So if we got three or four 1-1 one -one counters on the majority of our creatures and we tap this guy, that just jumped up to six or eight. So just a cool card. Again, this one, just to be clear, this creature is a merfolk. If you look up uh, the, the details, it's a merfolk for creature type. But what is really, really cool here is this guy lets us rob other people's commanders, and that's not just until end of turn. This is permanent robbery. So if you've got somebody who is entirely reliant on their commander being their way to do anything, this guy takes it and puts it under control, and you get it from there on out. Just a nasty way to control the board and to, to power yourself up a little bit. Mistcaller, just effective against things that are cheating in creatures from their graveyard or otherwise. The Bramble Sovereign. I try to fit this guy into any deck. He's maybe not the most needed card for this deck, but he's a lot of fun. We have so many creatures that we're casting in a tribal deck that anytime we can double up those non-legendary ones, it's just it's just a really great thing to do, especially for two mana. The Harbinger of the Tides. So this guy is just effective to flash on in and tap down a creature, something that's hard to deal with. The Stony Brook is going to be somebody to keep our creature spells, the cost down, because we're going we're to run kind of lean with mana here, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But just... A great way to keep things cheap. Kind of a unique way of almost ramping, I guess. Uh, Marrow Harbinger? Binger? Binger? Bringer? Binger? Binger? All right, yeah. Okay, I got it. Harbinger. Um, so 2-3 Island Walk Merfolk. A little expensive, but it lets you tutor any Merfolk. So if you want to get the one that steals commanders or whatever is necessary, it helps you get there fast. The Wake Thrasher, because, you know, you're going to be tapping and untapping a lot, and tapping everything down is easy to do when you have Kumena on the board, so he just gets gigantic come your turn. The Kosi Trickster, in Commander, you've got three opponents, at least typically. They're regularly tutoring and searching for things, so it's just a guy that makes them have to think twice about it, at least, or something they have to deal with that we don't mind that much if they get rid of right away, because... It takes away one of those removal spells that we don't want to have to put on something that has a little bit more power for us, but this guy can get out of hand if they don't deal with it. Uh, Deep Rue Elite, kind of lord-like. Um, whenever you cast another merfolk, you can put a 1-1 counter on any merfolk you control, which is kind of cool. The Wanderwine Prophets, I love this card because, you know, you get to take an extra turn. <laughs> Drowner of Secrets, um, just another way to tap things. Again, we're going to work so much off of this tapping and untapping mechanic. So getting to do this, we don't bank on necessarily milling somebody, but it doesn't hurt to start draining a library slowly if we don't have a lot else that we can do. Forerunner of Heralds, so um, just a fun way to, to get more 1-1 one -one counters from Merfolk and another way to dive through your library and find the Merfolk you need at that time. Thada. Thada is a great card. Uh, just being able to have, I mean, you're going to get a lot of ways to be unblockable with your mer merfolk and dealing direct damage, so it lets you get in to play some fun tricks on people. Thrasios, a good scry mechanic and lets you draw cards and put more lands on the battlefield, so just a, just a really good card. The Surge Spanner, um, another way to kind of control the board state. So if you want to swing into somebody who's only got one or two things that are really hard to deal with, this pops it back so you can open the doors and just bust on in. A great way to, again, work that tap and untap mechanic. And this one lets your merfolks counter spells. So it is crazy. Um, you also get to get more merfolk off of this. And again, it's a 2-2 two, two for 3 merfolk that does all of this for you. So this is a crazy good card in the deck. It, it controls everything. Chris Catcher, not a lot to have to say here. Just efficient, good card, great ability. Tshana, uh, one that is just, you're likely to have a lot of creatures on the battlefield, especially with some of the tokens that we're going to be generating off of a couple different cards. Getting to draw a lot and then not having to have a maximum hand size. So all the drawing that you do, you can just keep growing and growing that hand. Another way to tutor up any sort of merfolk from your deck is the Sea Hunter, the uh, Nemesis, and that whole set. A lot of garbage cards that are actually pretty effective if you're playing certain tribals in Commander. Nothing else but really Commander. 
And then, of course, the Deep Root Waters. This way, every time we cast a Merfolk spell, again, it doesn't have to resolve. Every time we cast a Merfolk spell, we're at least getting a 1-1 blue Merfolk with Hexproof every single time. So just really good way. So a huge chunk of creatures, which is the way to play when you're going with a tribal deck. The next thing we want to talk about is how we can further abuse this, this tapping mechanic and how often can we get things untapped. So we know we have the Merc Fiend, that lord out there, that Merc man. Um, we know that he is deadly. He's a lord in himself, but he also untaps everything. But we've got a few other ways too. Um, at the end of your turn, untap Merfolk you control. So this way you don't have to think twice. Just swing in and hit somebody or play off one of your tapping mechanics, whether it's more 1-1 one -one counters or drawing cards, whatever it is. You don't have to overthink it. At the end of your turn, you're always going to get to untap your merfolk. The other thing that's kind of interesting, and this will play out in a very few scenarios, is the type on this is merfolk too. So this, as much as it's an enchantment, not a creature, it is still merfolk for a type. So when something says tap X merfolk to do this, this is a permanent that can be tacked, uh, tapped to trigger that ability. So kind of neat. Intruder alarm. So... This has a dual purpose. One, it kind of locks down the board, so creatures do not untap during their controller's untap phases, so that means everyone. Nobody's creatures do. And whenever any creature comes into play, though, we get to untap all creatures, so it's kind of giving us control over the board state of creatures, especially if we're the one that's constantly a little bit more filled than others, because not everybody's always playing a tribal deck. So a good way to abuse the tap and untap mechanic, but also how to lock down the board. Paradox Engine, you know, whenever you cast a spell, you get to untap every non-land permanent. So, don't need to say more. It's just another way to get in there with that. And then, of course, the Seedborn Muse. Very much like the Merc Fiend at the um, each other person's untap step, you also get to use it and untap things. So, that's, you know, another on top of the Merc Fiend. That gives us four more avenues of untapping, which is just kind of what we're looking to do. The next thing we want to talk about is some other ways to draw just to keep drawing through a deck. So the first one is a real popular one, the Sensei's Divining Top. This is always giving us some foresight and what's to come, letting us kind of stack the deck we need to in, in planning for the future and knowing what's to come. It's a tribal deck, but it also has a lot of control with it, so this really helps to plan that out and plot your course to win. Um, we got Ristic Study. I mean, honestly, guys, if you're in Commander and if you're playing blue, this card should always be in your deck. There is very few circumstances you shouldn't have a Ristic study. The Biden of Thassa. Um, one, because, man, it's flavorful. You know, it's a Biden. There's a C. That just feels right for Kumena. But it also lets you control how the other creatures are playing on the board state, making sure other people have to attack so you don't have to worry about people blocking you, basically. It also gives you more of a way to draw a card, though, when your creatures are getting through, especially when you make them unblockable, even, even by the ones. Then Kindred Discovery is another thing where, of course, we would choose Merfolk for the creature type. Whenever one enters the battlefield or attacks, you get to draw a card. So attacking and casting or resolving on the battlefield are, are more ways to draw and draw and get through your deck to get to what we need. So we know that this is a tribal deck, so let's talk through some tribal staples. Got the Metallic Mimic, basically another lord for you, and it's a real cheap one. Two of any color for a 2-1. It itself will be a merfolk, and then every merfolk you cast comes in with a 1-1 counter. Again, we have Voral in here where you can double the counters on something, so it's just beefing that up even more. We've got the Herald's Horn. This was a fantastic print in last year's 2017 Commander sets. All of those got one. I, I think these things run for like 14 or 15 bucks, though. I'm a little shocked they're not rares, but one, it makes everything cheaper. That's a merfolk. It also helps you to just dig through your deck, you know, getting through it a little bit faster than you otherwise would. Door of Destinies, just getting more counters on this. And again, these counters can double up too. And it makes all of your merfolk stronger. Coat of Arms, this is an old one, guys. I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain it, but this is insane, especially as we think about all those little tokens that are going to be all over the place. This is going to make those tokens like 8 8 merfolk with hex proof. It's going to be ridiculous. Vanquisher's Banner, it's a similar thing, um, not quite as deadly as Coat of Arms, but it lets us draw cards, so arguably something you maybe want a little bit more, but similar idea. The Immortal Sun, this is to protect us from any of those Super Friends decks. It also lets us draw more cards, it also makes things cheaper, and hey, all of our merfolk get lorded one more time. 
And then uh, we got hardened scales. Uh, we have so much 1 1 counter play in here between a few different avenues, you know, mainly the commander, Kamena himself. So this is just making sure we're always getting more value out of that. One more each time. And then, of course, the Beast Master's Ascension. Uh, your first swing will very likely be with, I don't know, four to six Merfolk already. Once you've gotten to it, once you've done that twice, it's basically giving all of them plus five, plus five. So something that they're going to have to answer. Again, taking away some of that removal that just gets annoying. But if they don't, it's crazy good. <laughs> the next thing we're going to talk about are our control cards. Um, another one that really just belongs in every blue deck is Cyclonic Rift. It's a really great card, returning either one permanent or really looking to overload. So let's say you've got this incredible board state, but it's dangerous to swing in, but you could take out two or maybe all three of your opponents in one swing because it has gotten so devastating. You get to overload this card. If, if it resolves, there's nothing to worry about. Just pick it out wisely, get that damage in the right areas and wipe the, wipe the world and make, make yourself the winner. Counterspell, because, you know, your control, we're going to counter spells. Arcane Denial, same thing. We don't really care if they draw a couple cards. We're going to be drawing so much, and this is another way we get to even draw one and counter any sort of spell for a pretty low mana cost. Disallow, it's, it's important because it lets us do more than just spells. It lets us counter certain abilities that could really devastate us too, so it's just something to hold on to for that right moment. Uh, Mystic Confluence, more than one mode. We could be drawing cards, we could return things, we could be countering spells. It's just got a lot of versatility. Cryptic Command, kind of the same thing, but better. You know, get to choose a different couple modes, whether it's tapping all the creatures your opponents control, so everything's tapped down and you can swing away, or returning something or countering something, all of the above. And then, of course, the Swan Song. So one mana to counter target enchantment, instant, or sorcery spell. So it's controller gets a 2-2 bird, but you know, you're know you likely countering a board wipe or something like that for just one mana. The next thing we're going to talk about is ramping. We got a little bit of ramp in here and one that is going to be really explosive with as many creatures, especially low mana cost creatures we're going to be pumping out. But the first one is Soul Ring. If you're playing Commander, play Soul Ring. I'm not going to talk much more about that. Next one, though, is Cryptolith Right. This one turns every single one of your creatures into a mana dork that taps for any color mana. And remember how much we're untapping things, and remember how many cards benefit from just tapping themselves, even if they're not attacking, where you get to draw a card and otherwise. So a really good way to make your entire board state mana dorks and basically cast your entire hand. Uh, the Signet, Simic Signet, just a simple one. Commander Sphere, another one that at least we can sack and draw a card. And then, of course, my favorite that's always in a deck. Piers Whim lets you search for any land. So there, are gonna, there could be some key lands that you want to find in this deck. And then it helps your foes have to sack you know, an artifact or an enchantment. So it's a little bit of removal as well. The last two cards in the deck outside of the lands, we've got Beast Within. So we have some sort of removal, or at least an answer, because there's not a ton in this deck otherwise. And a heroic intervention. So if somebody drops that Wrath of God, we can do this and save our world for at least one turn. The lands themselves, not going to do a deep dive. You know, there's some pretty cool ones, though. You've got Alchemist Refuge, so if you want to make everything flash. Myriad Landscape to help fix your mana. Um, you know, there's just, you know, I've got most of... The lands that can tap for for you know the the green or blue so um not nothing nothing too huge here just some of the staples um you know one one that's not in here that i will plan on adding especially after we open all the ultimate masters boxes that we've ordered is uh, uh can't think of the name but the one that lets it tap for any creature and then it can't be countered i can't believe i'm not remembering the name but that that'll be one that that's essential for this deck as well so that is our breakdown of Kumena, Tyrant of Orazka. Can't really get the light on that quite right. This guy is super fun to play. I have gotten to test this a couple times. I was actually already kind of in the beginning stages of making this when you guys at all, when the majority of you had said, love to see Kumena, love to see Kumena. I already had a lot going on. So uh, it was fun to finish this out. I'm honestly still tweaking it as each day goes on. So as you watch this video, if you're like, hey, you know, I tried this and it was, it was a huge win for me. Let me know. Leave a comment below. Would love to see your take on it or some of your feedback for the deck. I'll say this, though. It is easily the most fun tribal deck I've gotten to play. The merfolk are devastatingly good. 
I'm not even a huge fan of control, but man, when you can control with this much stompy in front of you, this much aggress aggression, it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, make sure you're sharing with your friends and family and everybody you know. And if you don't know anybody, you know there's always things like Reddit. Just drop it out there. Um, otherwise, if you want to watch more, click over here to watch more. If you're not a subscriber, click this thing right over here so you can become a subscriber. Otherwise, we're Booster Therapy. Thank you so much. Have a happy Thanksgiving if this gets posted before Thanksgiving. A wonderful holiday season. And remember, guys, we love you and all you do for us. Have a good night.